Okay. Let's watch the anti-racist camp Republicans camp ban. If you primarily studied the culture of your ancestors in elementary school, take a step forward. If your ancestors were forced to come to the United States, not by choice, take a step backwards. So this is uh, what they call the a privilege group? line. And they ask a series of questions Look about how you may numbers. be privileged in life. And if you can see towards the front, it's mostly white male. In the back, it's mostly black women. Were, if you do not have to think about race and racism every day, take a step forward. What the f*** is this, man? Any town where we found our common ground. This is Any Town Leadership Camp. Atop a mountain in Arizona, detached from the distractions of the world, there's no horseback riding, creek swimming, or lake fishing. These young folks are here to lean into conversations most people try to stay away from. Conversations around race, diversity, and privilege. Has an idea of what prejudice is. Any town camp. What exactly is this thing? So sometimes described as like a human relations camp, uh, a leadership camp. We're talking about kind of all the isms. So we'll focus on racism, sexism, ableism. But then we're also focusing on like, how do you have a productive conversation? Any town has been stirring young minds in Arizona since the 50s. It was started by the National Coalition of Christians and Jews, an organization wanting to rid the world of bigotry. Now, there are dozens of any towns across America, but they all operate independently. Hey girl, do your thing, do your thing and switch. Here in Arizona, campers pay up to $500 to spend the week talking about these controversial issues. But does it do any harm? I feel like it's still useful to the small amount of people that do go. Yeah, no, I probably if there's one person that's fucking turned from this. Check out. The you were with someone saying something like racist, homophobic, just something hateful. And you were like frozen in that moment and had no idea what to do. Matt Case is an Arizona public school teacher. And one Yo, that part, you guys want to know what fucking... I think de-radicalizes people. I'm not like a professional at this stuff at all, okay? I don't know anything about educating children, even though I do fucking educate 30,000 kids every day Bug. to the best of my ability. But you know what I personally think is like really fucking helpful with de-radicalizing people or like showing them their privileged blind spots, as I like to say? Racism is bad, happy 10 months. Being honest about their fucking bigotry like, in a safe environment, people uh, from a diverse uh, uh, background, like a group of individuals from every fucking marginalized identity, getting together and being honest about the fucking bigotry that they, uh, one, have experienced, but also they themselves have fucking thought or have done. I think that's supremely important in, like, uh, uh, rehabilitation, I guess. Just say it with your chest, no, 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 no. It's like what I do. There are, I, I can't say this with a fact. I, I don't know. Uh, I can't say this for a fact. I don't know if this is real or not. But there are so many people in this community that probably held on to like a lot of transphobic opinions. And they've heard me talk a million times over about how I used to say transphobic shit. Okay. Or, or had transphobia. Okay. That I was a transphobic person. That probably makes them more comfortable uh, with saying like, well, that guy changed his attitude. That's uh -huh, why like P -P -P. having someone like myself from a privileged background does help with respect to uh, de-radicalizing people. Cause like some people are fearful that uh, there is this attitude among progressive groups that like you have, you can never ever, ever fucking do wrong. Or if you've ever done a bad thing, if you've ever done a bad thing, Ten months that past. means like you're a bad person across the board. Like if you ever held on to a bigoted point of view, we're not going to examine the social conditioning that factors into that. That just means you're individually a bad person. And I feel like for people, uh, getting over that hump is, is genuinely hard. So I also feel like having this conversation in a diverse environment where people show you, like, look, there's a lot of people uh, that have bigoted opinions. You know, having, like, a black person there uh, demonstrate that they themselves are maybe transphobic. 
You know what I mean? While the white person's like, I've had some racist thoughts. Like, that is a shared experience uh, where, where people recognize, like, oh, yeah, everyone has some, like, fucking flaws, and it's all good. Like, we should learn from them and become better. You feel me? One of the camp's three directors. But he first came to Anytown as a camper at 17. When I first started, like, in the 90s, I think we had a very, like, almost a little bit of a colorblind approach. And so what's changed there is, like, we're going to take a look at white privilege. We're going to take... I think the most de-radicalizing has to come through organic exposure, like the godson of David Duke who became friends with the Jewish... Yeah, Derek Black. At that time, you know, I had been hosting these Shabbat dinners. We knew that Derek had grown up in a white nationalist family, amongst white nationalist royalty, so to speak, and probably didn't know any people from the backgrounds that his ideology despised. People I met at the Shabbat dinners, in particular one person who did the brunt of all this labor of listening to me explain this ideology and what all is my evidence for it and why am I so convinced this is true, and then doing the labor to say, you are misusing crime statistics, here's how statistics works, and having that sort of conversation happened sort of naturally. It was from meeting at the dinners, but then being on a small campus and doing things like, let's go down to the bay to watch the sunset and just spend time as people. And eventually it becomes sort of awkward that we've never talked about that you believe in a reprehensible political ideology and you're advocating something terrible and you seem kind of nice. How do you <laughs> reconcile that? Eric Black, uh, who is, whose father literally is like a foundational person in like the modern American Nazi movement, uh, would go, the, the son of a fucking rabbi, I think, at his school that he went to in college, would literally uh, bring him to Shabbat dinners, like over and over again. And that exposure, but that's why I said it has to be a diverse environment. Because like, segregation is so fucking bad, dude. H hot take. <laughs> hot take, folks. But... Segregation is so abhorrent and so bad. And we still have super segregated uh, communities in America right now. Both in the, uh, the remnants of the, the Jim Crow South and also in the fucking Jim Crow North. Like, in contemporary American society, there are still, there is still a fuckload of segregation. It's, uh, it's couched within class lines, as it historically has always. But there's still absolutely, like, the racial segregation on top of that. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, look to every fucking urban environment, even, and you will recognize that. Name a city and I'll name you the Red Line Street? That's a fucking trick question. It's MLK Street or MLK Boulevard or Avenue. Literally universal. Straight up. How do you feel about American college bringing back black segregation at black students' request? Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's not what's going on, okay? I'm sorry. Let me, let me stop you right there. Marginalized groups want a safe environment for themselves so they can have a fucking brief solace from the constant fucking feedback that they're getting about how they're somehow wrong, where, like, every moment, every conversation they have to have also has to have like a fuckload of precursory information that they have to give to the other person to, in a lot of instances, I I explain their humanity to someone who does not see them as such. Okay? That's all that that is. That's not a problem. Asshole. It's a fucking tiny, minor thing. Okay? Quit trying to justify self-segregation. It's not a real concept. It's literally not real. There are people who are like, oh yeah, I'm a black separatist. Like, yeah, okay, 12 people, okay? Not serious. Stop. You sound literally good kind of segregation. Yeah, it's like saying fucking uh, getting vaccinated or going to quarantine is, is segregation. Yeah, a good kind of segregation. Not everything has to be fucking wrong. Looking for a singular safe space in a college campus so you don't have to fucking literally, so you can like escape. Like if you're a trans person, it's the greatest example of this. If you're a trans person, Going to college and recognizing that you yourself are actually trans, despite that, the fact that like you were probably 
you probably had a lot of, uh, you know, internalized transphobia as a consequence of how powerful and how pervasive transphobia is, and how normative that position is. A safe space uh, provides a sense of community where you can actually learn in an environment uh, uh, where you're not around people who literally will be like, oh, you're trans, you're a fucking dude. Like, fuck you. Oh, you're trans, there's something wrong with you. Do you understand? That's what it offers. And it's impossible, dude. It is literally fucking impossible for you to comprehend if you don't have any of those, like, uh, marginalizations. It's impossible for you to comprehend. You will never, ever understand this. Okay? You just won't. Because you're, unfortunately, uh, uh, I hate to tell this to you, is pr pretty privileged. Like, most spaces are safe for you. You know what I mean? Especially if you're, like, a white dude. And I'm saying this from my own perspective. Like, I'm a fucking white dude. Okay? Every space is safe for me. That's why when people come in here, they like, they're like, oh, you sand N-word or whatever every now and then, you Muslim terrorist, whatever. It doesn't really fucking impact me. It doesn't really bother me. That's whatever. But ultimately, like, people don't come in here and they're like, they, they can't use anything that's like a pejorative against me. You know what I mean? Like any of the, uh, any of the characteristics that I have can't really be used as a way to attack me or uh, or criticize me in the way that so many people have my entire uh -huh. life. That's the everyday existence of anyone that is a marginalized uh, person. Gay bars, historically black colleges, religious Love organizations you, on campuses are not three. exclusionary. They're inclusionary and create a space to see and connect with people who have similar experiences. Yes, without having to defend your existence um, from fucking dumbass debate lords that want to be like, I'm just trying to have a conversation with you. It's like, Dude, sometimes you don't want to have a conversation. Sometimes you just want to fucking relax. And you have that privilege. You can always relax because no one is like, your whiteness is offensive or whatever the fuck. Almost or when people year. do say that, it's Looking like completely powerless and, and fucking silly. And you can move on. You know what I mean? You're not going to be, you're not going to go to the bank and they're going to be like, you're white. So you're not getting a fucking bank loan. Or you're not going to fucking, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you're not going to get denied a job opportunity in a similar capacity. I know a lot of white dudes will be like, what the fuck? Diversity initiatives have made it impossible. It's like, yeah, I know. That's why it's still like, you know, 70%, 79% of like fucking all uh, higher level positions are still filled by white dudes. <laughs> okay. And that's what, that's the reason for safe spaces. And they are ultimately harmless. It's like a fucking area that you can go to once a week or some shit. Like, most people that cry about safe spaces have never been inside one, and they've only heard about it from reactionary ass anti SJW uh, uh, idiots who literally cannot stop thinking about uh, black people existing and trans people existing. Like they literally just cannot stop. They're just oh, that's all they talk about. Okay. Anyway, what is calling all people, white people racist, marginalizing white people's experience? Yeah, banks don't fucking. Turn away anyone else either. Stop lying. Maybe because most people in the U.S. are white. The world is not a safe space. Dude, you are a four-month subscriber. Has been following since 2019. Are you all right, dude? What happened? Did your fucking brother take over your account or something? You chatters are fucking idiots. And so it's not, maybe it's not misinformation. You fucking idiot, bro. I always prescribed Evermectin as a face cream. You are the one spreading misinformation. Fucked hard. Oh, my God. Oh, this is like... This has got to be like a fucking... This is my most loyal hate watcher, I think. I have literally been told that all white people are racist and that is a core belief of CRT. My God, dude. That is not a fucking... What the fuck are you saying, dude? He's completely right about what he said. You're spreading information about the vaccine and it's the effects on the top of the hour ad break. No. The only fucking vaccine for the top of the hour ad break that's coming right now because it's 357 is a $5 a month subscription or a Twitch Prime or an ad block or a VPN. Dude, I wonder why this dude has been watching for so long. Like, he's, like, routinely in the chat. The world is not a safe space. Dude, that is such a fucking idiotic take. I know that, dumbass. So why not fucking create, like, at least a singular moment for people to fucking breathe if they want to? I, I hate that. Like, I hate that take. It's such a dumb take, dude. That's the whole point. Like, I love when... This is such a painfully white take. The world is not a safe space. It's like, what, you think black people don't know that, you fucking idiot? 
you think black people are gonna like have like a fucking gathering okay once a week or you think like gay people and trans people are gonna have a gathering once a week at like a fucking safe space and then all of a sudden they're gonna forget like the many years of bullying and homophobia and transphobia that they fucking endured like what a dumb take dude you have to be uh, a, you have to literally exist in a situation that is already incredibly fucking privileged to be able to to have such a take like pride, this and assume that it's pride, profound gender pride transgender pride transgender pride one of those guys that thinks it makes americans soft lmfao yeah dude when i think about hardened americans i think of conservatives who fucking literally have an aneurysm when uh someone says allah instead of god I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under Allah, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Under Allah. Let's bring in our panel for their reaction, including member of Project 21 and host of Money Talk with Melanie Collette. Melanie, uh, welcome to our panel. Melanie, let's start with you. What do you think about this? My jaw dropped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm mine with yours. When they recite like the fucking Pledge of Allegiance or some shit at a high school uh, graduation, that's what I think of. I think of like, you know, the, the peak of strength, Love okay, and masculinity is hogs that fucking lose their shit when a corporation in very transparently capitalist interests say like, yeah, for one month alone, we're just going to oh. fucking you know, be as gay as we can. And in that sense, like, they're not even fucking leather daddies all of a sudden, but they just have, like, a fucking uh, rainbow flag all over their shit. And conservatives are like, what the fuck? Why can't I have that one month also be straight proud? Where's my straight proud? It's like, dude, that's literally, you are the fucking softest baby butter bullshit. Yee. All these daily streams whether big or whether small So there he is again The sun is streaming The sun is streaming You wait